And here you have it, Idilla, our great failing. Now let us go to Anakatos. He may hide from our people's needs, but he will not refuse a visitor sent from Athene. We are adrift in these lands, I must admit. We might have been great enough to overcome the burdens, but now we cannot. Now that the trouble with the Jotun has been solved, I am free to investigate other threats to my people, and there are many options to choose from. The Goddess of Wisdom is... was our patron. Though my people worship all the Titans, they hold Athene as our personal guardian. But the gods do not look to us or listen to us. What manner of patron neglects their charge, leaves their wards to the wilderness? The gods choose the Primos to lead we Colossi and to enact their will. Of the gods, we are the favored of Athene, the goddess of wisdom. Or we were. Athene's once common words have been quiet for some time. The Primos has prayed in isolation for years, but she does not answer. Very well. Please, just let me past. I will only be gone for a short while. You know why you cannot leave. Without you, the city could never be completed. You cannot keep me here against my will. I am not some animal. You know it is far too dangerous for you to leave. My business in the teeth of Naros is no concern of yours. Others may come and go as they please. I demand the same respect. No, Passator. It is not safe out there. You must remain in the city that is final. What is it? Unless you can somehow convince the guards to let me leave the city, you're only wasting my time. I'm sorry. It just makes you a little crazed, you see, being locked inside this city like a penned animal. All I want is to leave for a short time to travel to the Warren and check on my wife, Galatea. But I cannot leave. This city is the child I never had. I poured myself into this stone, these edifices, these reliefs. But now I have been here so long that these walls have lost their charm. They are only the bars of a prison to me. My wife and I were separated when the city was raised. I believe her to still be in the teeth of Naros. I hope she is unharmed. I am one of Idilla's finest masons. So much so that it seems I am an institution amongst my people. It seemed nice at first, but they handle me like a work of art, with too much caution. The stone used to build this city was dug out from the Warren. It was our main quarry, but much of it is inaccessible now. The rest is home to beasts. I did not choose to leave her beckoned. I wanted her to come with me, but she can be difficult to move to action sometimes. But I cannot retrieve her now, for I am one of the city's finest masons. The guard are under orders not to let me leave, so I do not die. All I want to know is that she is unharmed, but I've done so well for this city that I am forbidden from departing. Well, you can certainly try, but Galatea is stubborn as stone. Would you truly beckon? That is something. At least I will be certain that she is unharmed. I left her in the ruins of the Warren, the city's old quarry. You should search there for her. We were separated when the city was raised. I last saw her in the quarries of the Warren. Please find my wife. Many greetings, stranger. How are you finding our city? Is it not wondrous? Truly, it is worth protection. 
With the trials my people went through to raise it into the sky, it has become more precious than gold. But these earthly costs are nothing compared to the rewards that will come to us. I know it. I am sworn to protect the people of this city before all else. Each member of the Guard would lay down their life for our people. The concourse is the main hub of our city. It is a place of gathering and prayer. However, it has been quiet since the great tragedy. I am sorry. I cannot say more. Visit the market if you need supplies. I've heard a rumor that the silent choir never talks. After all the miseries they have caused, I'm surprised that Jotun was spared at all. And it would seem that the deliverer of my people has found me at last. Many honored greetings to you, Beckoned. If you would, I have more than pleasantries to discuss. Like many, I seek your prowess. It is a grand city, worthy of protection. I strive to guard its citizens from the menaces below us, in the teeth of Naros. Looking at the Colossi here, you will find we have it in ourselves to be truly great. But we are also capable of much violence. I have lost much to the beasts of this land. I aim to ensure that none share this sorrow. The beckon shows the path the Colossi must walk again. So it has always been claimed. A culling. Though the Colossi are a people of faith, more and more of us are reverting to the savage ways of our ancestors. The lowest of these doubters become marauders, bloodthirsty and violent, capable of nothing but wrath. They must be purged. I thank you. It is high time we bring their savagery to an end. Each marauder should carry a totem of some sort. Bring those to me as proof of your deeds. The marauders have lost their reason, but not their strength. If they catch you unawares, you will not have much time left. They roam the lands below the city. I do not doubt that you will find them if you seek them out in the wilds. Best watch yourself. I've heard a rumor that the silent choir. You do so much for us, Beckoned. How great of you to come to our city. There are always smaller items of inquiry or aid that the people of Idilla need. This board allows the community to assist them. There are always things to look after in this city, but keeping busy is a good way to ignore a burdened spirit. I am a member of the Guard, like any other. I am responsible for helping to manage the peace of the city. Much. We have many issues in our great city that need attention. We encourage all who wish to help to find a task suited to them on the nearby petition board. You may examine it, should you wish.
I pray for you. The beckoned has come at last. It can only mean that the gods wish to take us back into their favor. Even we Colossi do not venture into the lower sewer without cause, Beckoned. I recommend you avoid them as well. Lawbreakers and Idilla do not enjoy the luxury of internment. All lawbreakers are immediately subjected to combat. It may seem severe, but we are a wise people. None have had need to test this punishment. Least of all you, I am sure. Farewell, Beckoned. Stay out of trouble. Mind yourself in the sewers. A majority of the tunnels are safe for travel, but accidents can happen. Mine is the duty to safeguard the Colossi from any threat. So Sikandra has charged all the guard. The Primos is the leader of our people in prayer and in other matters of life. They are appointed by Athene herself. I understand that you and she have met. She is powerful, is she not? Truly a paragon of might and virtue. Tread carefully if you are heading into the sewer. Greeting, stranger. I've heard one of our scholars has been trying to study trolls. Has she taken leave of her senses? Oh? Mm -hmm. Well, you are quite small, are you not? I better watch where I place my feet. Oh, I only jest. Good tidings, Beckoned. Would that I could help you with something, but I await the Primos. We are the mightiest city in the world. Our stature proves it. Is there a skyline higher than ours in all of Armalur? There is not. He is powerful. Fit for the title of Primos. And yet, faith guides his actions more than the needs of his people. I cannot begrudge him his priorities, given the times we are in. However... I cannot but feel a bit ignored. Others may complain of their toils here. I have done well for myself. My family brought much of their wealth here from our old homeland. Without my patronage, much would be difficult to acquire here. I keep the trade brisk enough to afford me a sense of humor. If you venture below, mind your step. Must be the beckoned. This way leads to the Prebos' sanctum and the great mural. I serve Sikandra as I have for years. Anything she requires, I deliver. We do not keep a prison in Idilla. We try our victims with our spears. The guilty are soon made clear. The city around us is a great feat. But what you see is less than what we originally intended to raise. You can find our catacombs carved into the land below, near Atilos Nixaros. These were once to be part of Idilla. The gods were good to rip my people from their savagery. But I wonder how easily this gift might be taken away. The Primos' sanctum lies beyond these stairs. Treat it with due respect or be subject to Colossi law. She is swift, powerful, and decisive, truly worthy of her title. The mural nearby is a reminder of why we are here, above the lesser races, through the grace of Athene and the gods. I do not wish to take up your Beckoned. time, Beckoned. I pray for you. Yes? How may I serve? After all the miseries they have caused, I'm surprised the Jotun was... How may I serve? All.
The Primos is this way. Mind your step here, Beckoned. I wouldn't want the Colossi's failure to claim any more lives than it already has. It is not here by choice. Or our choice, anyways. Such questions would be better suited for the Primos. Suffice it to say that this was made in anticipation of something that never occurred. Be cautious in these lands. <laughs> if theme guide your actions. How may I serve? Are you enjoying the hospitality of the Colossi, Beckoned? Be careful on your travels. Beckoned, I cannot say you are what I envisioned, but I know better than to judge the God's chosen one. You will not lay eyes on a greater city in Amalur. It was a beauty on the ground, and is now only more beautiful that it has been raised into the clouds. Faith keeps most of our laws enforced, but I handle the ones not worthy of our God's close care. Would that we could cut ourselves off from it entirely. But though few will call it such, this is our true homeland. Good day. has come. Yes? Must be the beckon. You must be the beckon. Beyond these stairs is the sanctuary of the Primos, the leader of the Colossi people in the teeth of Naros. I must warn you, Anakotos has not left these quarters in years. 
He vowed to never cease his prayers until the gods answered them. And his people have languished for it. But I think his answer has finally arrived. Speak to him, Beckoned. His people have need of him. After years in his sanctum, I doubt he is the Primos I once knew. But though we all languish in the gods' absence, none suffer as he does. He will likely see you as the answer to his prayers. Farewell. Thank you. Is there anything I can assist you with? And how are you finding Idilla, Beckoned? We built it to be a great wonder of this world. The Primos attends to his own affairs. I am usually wanting for additional tasks. Anokatos is most secretive compared to his predecessor, who was killed in the Hyperion tragedy. Still, he is our best hope for the Colossi to realize our goals. It is the greatest city ever built. The gods themselves requested we built it to test our faith. The city soars above the ground, as you have seen, but it is not yet complete. Who knows if it ever will be? The greatest of us are nearly gods, and had the gods not shown us this, we might never have reached the state you see us in now. An odd question. They are gods. It is common knowledge that they are the creators of the Colossi, the creators of this world and everything in it. The great Athene is among their kind, and she has given us the task of inheriting the Titan's legacy now that they have ascended from this world. I wish you well in your journey.
fraught with tribulation, know that it leads to the land of our greatness, and that we walk it with you. Such were the words the gods spoke to the progenitor of my race when they sought to guide us from our base origins into a fruition of potential. The words have been in my heart every day of my reign, but now they are embodied. Welcome, Beckham. At last, this city will be complete. This is greater than any city or any temple that you will find in this world. Of that I assure you. But the city, though magnificent, is only half completed. I am the Primos of the Colossi people. As I lead them in politics, I lead them in prayer. This land is the crucible by which my people might be forged to their new destiny. Vicious and inhospitable, it rebukes my people's every step. The Colossi are the children of the Titans. We are the inheritors of their will, and we are the ones that will shepherd this world into a new age. The messenger of the gods, one summoned to bring the word of faith back to our people. I always assumed that the beckoned would be one of my own kind, but you bear the cipher. Your role cannot be made more clear. Many are the artifacts strewn throughout this world, but the cipher of Athene I have seen its outline traced in tomes and scrolls, but never in person. Bearing it makes you an embodiment of her power, Beckoned. She sees and hears through you. The goddess has shepherded my people for generations. She was responsible for the growth of my people. Somehow, we were found unworthy of her. I have prayed to learn why, but her anger must be far too great. Because we are all of us, my whole people, incomplete. Because we are not worthy enough, not deserving enough to see such wonders of the gods. And I thought that failure was a finality. I have prayed to the gods in seclusion in hopes of an answer. But they were as quiet as the silent choir. Now the beckoned is come. With you, the gods can bear witness to us atoning for our inadequacies. We must start at once, beginning with the wreath of absolution. Something no Primos would ever wish to wear. They are only made in times of great need. And we must prove to the gods our devotion. The Wreath of Absolution can only be created from the hands guided by Athene. I must ask you to assemble it. First, a golden prayer circlet is needed to serve as its base. The art of crafting one is all but lost to us, but I require one all the same. The last Primos to wear a wreath of absolution, Arches, is buried with one such circlet. Sikandra led you to me, did she not? Then she will lead you to the circlet. He led my people into the times that you see today. The gods did not favor his reign, clearly. The silent choir is a group of our most faithful followers, and serve me as I serve the gods. So deep is their faith that they never speak upon entering service. It lies in his crypt, in the darkest pits beneath the city. They are old halls, and they have fallen into disuse. I understand there might be 
trepidations in taking such an artifact from my predecessor's crypt, but I assure you, it is ordained. The times we have arrived at are desperate, and when the heavens show their intent, one cannot stand too much on ceremony. Very well, Beckoned. You return. Well, the Primos has not graced the ears of his subjects in ages. What has he said to you? The circlet of Arcase. And Anakatos expects me to lead you to it? Has his reclusion left him senseless? Has he forgotten his history as well as his people? Very well. As I cannot refuse the Primos, I will meet you in the crypts, in the undersewers of the city. Let us deal with this as quickly as possible. You are the first to hear his voice in some time. I almost thought he would join his acolytes in their silent pact. But his prolonged absence from his people has taken its toll on his judgment. Does the crypt of Arches have no sanctity to him? He... I have had chances to speak of Arkays before, but it is not fitting for me to discuss him. Not now. We can find it in the crypts beneath the city's sewers. They are old structures, forgotten as the city was built above them. Farewell. interest you in a potion? The life of the beckoned must be strenuous. Perhaps an elixir would help. Not many of my kind are drawn to horticulture, but it teaches me patience and satisfaction. There are miracles, great and small, to be seen in this world if you know where to look. But the gods had no use for subtlety with us. Look at this city. You can see their love of us. The plants of the teeth are strange compared to those from our original homeland. 
They require much attention and deft care. And as I've found, tiny hands. You would make a good apothecary, I wager. Be careful out there, Beckoned. Can I interest you in some armor? Do you see any armor in my stock you approve of? I handcraft all of my work. Armor is my passion, my livelihood. No one in all of Idilla can provide protection of higher quality. I am reputed with good reason. Though our skin looks like stone, we are but flesh, as any mortal race. We need armor to protect ourselves. There is no finer city than this. Have you seen any other place in armor lore that can match our horizon? Have you found streets more pristine and appealing? You have not, because that is an impossibility. With my armor, you have nothing to fear. Can I interest you in some armor? I can help repair your equipment. I shall endeavor to fix anything you bring me, Beckoned. I was one of the first to settle in Idilla, and I will be the last to leave if it ever comes to that. Many pine for our home of old, but not me. The clouds are my refuge now. Everything one requires, one will find in the concourse market. Weapons, armors, and healing implements. My days as a guard are behind me, but I know my way around arms and armor. I can patch it all up. Farewell. Welcome to the Idilla Market, Beckoned. Can I interest you in a freshly honed weapon? Our city didn't always have a place among the clouds, but Colossi Ingenuity changed that.
While it saves us from the wilds, it is my weapons that save the guard down below. We prefer the spear, for it suits us most in these lands, against this wilderness. But our travels have taken us many places, and I can craft weapons of every shape, and all are equally deadly. I construct weapons, and then I sell them. Most colossi are uncomfortable with their hands unfilled, so I endeavor to fill them. Would you like one? A weapon, I mean. Your hands are small. I hope you enjoy our fair city. A finer sage crafter there is not. Ah, the Beckoned. You won't find a better Sage Crafter in all of Idilla than me. This city is a promise between us and the gods, but it is also a promise between us and the races of Amalur. My people will grow into the majesty of this city, and with the Empire to come, we will spread the gods' light. Attention to detail is not overly common amongst the Colossi. Much can escape the notice of one so elevated. But the facets and powers of my gems hold so much meaning and power. How could I ignore them? There is a lesson in sage crafting. Even the smallest jewel can turn a common sword into a deadly weapon. The finest magical craft, guaranteed. Please peruse my wares, Beckoned. Though magic is new to our people, I can craft fine artifacts for it. I bear my skill proudly. There are those that stand by their spears, but even our greatest warriors acknowledge the worth of magic. Our ancestor race, the Myru, had no skill with magic. You can see how much we've progressed. With our arcane skill, we set this whole city to float among the clouds. But such ability must be tempered with appropriate humility, so the Primos has taught. I do not envy his position. He must lead us after his predecessor's grave mishaps. However, he will bring much glory to our people should his goal be realized. I will be here if you need.
careful here. The beckoned has come. Please, do not disturb the tragedians in their work. This stage is the tapestry on which Master Stratton paints his productions. You are the first of your kind to see it. You should be honored. I am the custodian of the theater. Stratton concerns himself with the art, and I, the material. And I handle the audience as well. If they are rude, I eject them with impunity. The story of my people is the stuff of great theater, in a way. From humble beginnings, we're to ascend to the highest station in Amalur. The master is the playwright who runs the theater, and uses it to house his productions. With just a few tragedians and a manuscript, he is quite capable of rendering any historical scene in exquisite detail and vibrancy up on that stage. He gains influence daily, and I am certain his is the mind that will lead the Colossi into a new age of enlightenment. It is a popular locale for many, and we gain more followers every day. Master Stratton's plays invoke the imagination and spirit of the Colossi such that few can resist. I wish you well. Well, it seems that Stratton isn't releasing his play anytime soon. I've heard. It's his opus, or so he said. I wouldn't blame him for being careful with it. Now would be an ill time to release his most cherished work, anyhow. Because of the unhappy state of the city? That's reasonable, I guess. But every play of Stratton's is his opus, or so he would have us believe. Have faith in me. I'm familiar with Stratton's tendencies. <laughs> the city to your liking, Beckoned. I am a tragedian of several years. I have often been cast as the villain, and I'm rather ashamed to find myself comfortable in such a role. Of course, you must exercise all of yourself to attain true strength. I long to try other roles, but I am unsure where to start. Stratton loves this place. I think he has some qualms with living up to his forebearer, Andronikos. But he still tries. While these halls are to serve as a home for all forms of the art of stage, tragedy is what usually abounds here. There are a few of us that devote ourselves to the art, mostly just the ones you see milling around here listlessly. You honor us with your presence. I have not acted in some time. I am eager to know when my next performance is. It's a great accomplishment, to be sure. But I think that my people often forget that we are the project of the gods, not this city. That is why I focus on theater. Rather than focusing on the city, we should be focusing on ourselves. I will not lie. Earlier in my career, I played the Beckoned, though I believe I took the role in a different direction. Uh, in truth, I find the tragedies we've made recently to be rather dreary. I prefer satires myself. The Humboldt seems an interesting production. There is an opportunity for much if some of the tone is changed. 
Ithene is the goddess of wisdom, but she is also a goddess of art. We must appease this aspect of her nature as well. As it does not involve true might, the profundity of theater is lost on my brethren. But the spectacle is still enjoyed. Enjoy your stay.
years? There is so much that needs to be done for my new work. Will I ever see the end of it? He was my mentor. I apprenticed as a tragedian under Andronikos. I sharpened his quills, blotted his parchment. And here I am today. I had written a piece for him, the unanswered. Unfinished, but unplayable. It was too bitter. A greater subject for my work I cannot think of. How intricate my people are with their vulnerabilities and strengths. I was a tragedian before I became the master playwright I am today, studying under Andronikos himself. No one knows more than I do about literature and colossi theater, except perhaps for Master Andronikos, but he is, unfortunately, no longer with us. I despair that he will never see the productions I have written since his passing. Despite all I have accomplished, I feel that I am still working to crawl out from under his shadow. Perhaps with my newest play, The Humbled, I can finally do so. The fine establishment you see here is the Theatre of Andronikos. We tragedians and our loyal audience are the cultural center of Idilla. Questions of ethics, morals, and cultivation are explored through the metaphor of my plays. Entire worlds are created and destroyed on that stage behind me. Farewell. Can the beckoned be so small? Enter the beckoned. Many are waiting in anticipation for Stratton's work, but he insists the work will not be ready until a grand fit of inspiration comes. I have a sprawling range as a tragedian, I assure you, but I require the chance to prove it. Perhaps the humbled is my great opportunity. I am not blind to the fact that our city has a troubled past, there is little we tragedians can do about it save continue to perform for our audiences. This is as much a temple as a theater, erected in the honor of the craft. There is no greater celebration of plays in all of Amalur. Enjoy the theater of Andronikos. Please do not disturb the tragedians in their work. The Lycaos is popular no more. Careful of the marauders. Go to the teeth. All are welcome to use the beds here in the living quarters. 
my people have long led lives that inflict a certain strain on the body. As you may have seen, even in our city among the clouds, danger persists. Thus, we maintain the living quarters as a place of rest, open to all. Our city has hung in the heavens for a time now, but it remains incomplete. Idilla's centerpiece, the Hyperion, rejected our magics and refuses to rise. I make sure the beds are swept, and that any who need aid, receive it. Return to us if you need a place to rest. Beckon? It seems my preconceptions were... off. But I still need your divine aid. The plague spreads. Are you enjoying its splendors? This fair city is rich with them. Even in the sewers, under its gleaming exterior, lies a feat of engineering unrivaled by other cities in Amalur. A hidden menace, the secret hoard. Though few acknowledge them, the rats are the great threat to this city. In my younger days, I hunted the vermin with a force of will unequaled by the greatest of the theologians in the Lycaeus. The Lycaeus breeds thinkers, philosophers. They spend their days pondering the greater meaning of existence. Such are their debates that they shake the very foundations of Idylla. For some time, non-believers have touted that the relevance of the Lycaeus has passed. But I'm confident all it needs is one brilliant lecturer to stoke its fires. I am a mason, one of many caretakers of the sewers. I have worked on this city for all my lifetime. The sewers that run below it are my masterpiece. But this work of art is besmirched by rats. These foul vermin run rampant in my catacombs, tainting it with their fitted presence. Try as I might, I cannot best the scourge. But you beckoned. Your divine intervention is needed. I have never known beasts with such low cunning and high birth rates. They are fearless as they are disgusting. I have pinpointed a much-traveled route used by the rats and seeded it with traps that can be activated on command. Find the levers that activate those traps. They've been placed on a ledge overlooking the route. When you see the rats pass below, simply pull the levers as they approach the traps. Slay the filthy vermin! Once, I hunted the rats that plague our sewers with such zeal. But I have worked myself to exhaustion, and am forced to rest here. Though I rest, the rats do not. Please, find the traps I laid in the sewer, and lay waste to them! I wish you well. Are you finding Idilla to your life, Beckett? I expected the Beckoned would arrive sooner or later. Greetings, Beckoned. Have you come to pass the time? If we wait long enough, Stratton might even have another play ready when we're done. Like Stratton and Andronicus before him, I am a writer. 
but I tend towards essays and dissertations rather than metaphor and prose to deliver my messages. I was a close friend of Andronikos. I have reviewed every production displayed in his theater for those not in attendance. In the years since, I have been told that I've been unkind to Stratton, but I beg to differ. I am honest. I have mixed feelings for our dear playwright. He was once the tragedian prodigy of Andronikos himself. Many looked to him to fill the master's shoes when Andronikos died. Most believe Stratton has succeeded. I am unconvinced. I plan to attend, as I do with all the productions held in the city, though my hopes for it are not high. A mighty playwright, Andronikos knew that the gods would be pleased should our art reflect their majesty. Much like Idylla itself, the theater was constructed as much for its utility as it was as a tribute to Athene. I must Blessings think of a new work. Come on, Irina. How long must we be tested? The Lycaos is popular no more. I wonder. Can the beckoned be so Beckoned? Do we have some business? Look at this place. Why would anyone choose the wild below over this? With my brother, in disposing himself, it falls to me to keep watch over my family's estate, little though it is. Ah, the famed Beckoned comes to me at last. Admittedly, my request might be the smallest you will hear, but I wish to voice it nonetheless. I do not forget Arches, or what he did for my people. He led us here, and started this city, but most cannot see past his flaws. This is a place for those who are weary of their burdens. If you feel so, you can rest for a while. How do you find our city, Beckoned? Grand, is it not? It is the great island of progress, as I see it. But even it cannot forget the world it left below. All the rocks you see... Here and in the sewers, once rested in the teeth of Naros. I'm just one who's intent on maintaining the cultural integrity of her people. We were once no nobler than the Jotun or the Etin. Some would purge this history, but then how will we remember it? To preserve the past. All around us is the great chisel and hammer of progress, keen on dragging my people towards enlightenment. But such progress means nothing without context. I wish for someone who can find artifacts of my ancestors, reminders of our simpler times. Very good. I'll reward you for any artifacts you can find, but larger artifacts will do well for both of us. I await your findings. They are little things, of no intrinsic value, but as my people are so convinced to make progress, these artifacts are the few records of who we once were. They are strewn throughout the teeth of Naros. They may be hidden in forgotten corners, or carried by beasts as trophies. Good luck in your search. I expected the beckoned would arrive sooner or later. The life of a colossi puts me to the Another day in this floor. 
forsaken land. Have you been to the Lycaos? Or the theater? There is far more for an explorer there than here. I am a frequent patron of the theater, but I grow tired of Stratton's work. When will Irina produce something? It is a place of respite, or a monument to the god of boredom. Count the columns, or the straws in the bed if you need something to do. Or, better yet, get out of here. I've seen the bulk of his works. They are often pretentious and bloody. I enjoyed Andronikos' satires myself. It knew better days, I think. The current master, Stratton, can keep the people entertained, but not musing. Be safe. These lands Blessings are hardly hospitable. did not see. Second, I admit that I have eyed you with some interest. I await for the chance to debate you personally. The Colossi believe that ours is the greatest city in all of Armalore, Beckoned. I am inclined to agree. We were strong enough to rip it from the clutches of the Earth. How could there be any doubt? No doubt the gods favor us because we had the strength to perpetuate their message. This is the center of theology in Idilla beckoned. My people attend to debate any topic they like with whomever they like. 
We leave social standing at the door. All that matters in the Lycaos is virtue and a sound argument. I am a student of Master Onesimos, and I hold the highest rank among all of his disciples. My current point of study is the nature of strength and its relation to virtue. I wish you luck in your endeavors, Beckoned. The... the Beckoned? Do you seek to debate? You should speak to Master Onesimus to arrange one. We would be thrilled to hear a lecture given by the Beckoned. Oh, uh, the city? It is... well, it is grand, as everyone says. I wish I could say more of it. But I spend most of my time in the Lycaos. Though the Lycaos is open to all who wish to debate, some choose to spend their lives mastering the arguments. Like me. I hope it will make me a stronger Colossi. I am... Uh, the youngest of Onesimos' students. Uh, there is much I have yet to learn. Goodbye, Began. Uh, I wish you well. Greetings. Welcome to the Lycaos Beckoned. I remember when this city sat on firm earth instead of thin air. Those were dark times, where daily we grappled with the wilds of the teeth of Naros. But we endured, and now we have carved a near paradise for ourselves among the clouds. No finer city exists. There is no greater home, no event, no thought, no prayer is raised that does not get tried and tested in our debates. I am a student of the Masters, and there is no greater joy for me than the debate. I truly love it here. Currently, my studies have me exploring the value of life versus that of the spirit. I hope you enjoy the rest of Idilla. You are much smaller than I expected. I've heard one of our scholars has been trying to say. Ah, so the Beckoned has arrived. Are you here for a debate? I've an astute interest in researching the Terex. They are noble, lethal beasts. They can match a Colossi in might in the right numbers. The life of a god is always busy in these lands. Take it from me. The city is grand though it has borne much doubt and anguish. But I believe the stones we placed can weather these storms. We are strong, but not immortal. Though our skin resembles stone, mortal blood flows beneath it. 
The Lycaos is the essence of the Colossi. I am glad to see it run by a great thinker such as Onesimus. The scholar truly has mastered the art of discourse. Though it has been years, I believe he can still make a persuasive argument on any topic. I hunger for debate. Have you perhaps spoken to Master Onesimos? He runs the Lycaos and can answer any questions. Our city stands the highest in all of Amalur, and that means that it is the greatest. It is no coincidence that our culture and virtue have flourished up here among the clouds. I am a relatively new debater, but already I have made my mark. I outranked Thais in the Master's eyes, though we became disciples on the same day. My area of interest is the nature of war. It is built to honor the struggle we all must go through to attain wisdom. And we embody that struggle every day. If you have wounds to tend to, Paris can assist you. Well, the debates have given me plenty to think about. Do you require assistance? I can heal whatever wounds you may suffer. I am one of Onesimos' oldest disciples. I have taken to tending to the inexperienced students after their debates. The master is troubled. The Lycaos has seen its attendance gradually drop since the tragedy of the Hyperion. Have you seen it? The theater is perhaps our greatest rival in capturing the idle time of Idyllus citizens. Over the years, I've warmed to the idea of their productions, but there is no substitute for the Lycaos' debates. Perhaps I should see Stratton's newest play. be the beckoned. I must say that you are the most peculiar specimen I have ever glimpsed. Your fate, I cannot think, but I have been blinded. But you are the only flaw in my gaze. The first of many failures. I have seen the portents of the future, and the old Primos wears the garb we all will be shrouded in. I have always been able to snatch glimpses of the future. But very recently, since news came that you appeared in our land, these dim half-visions of mine have burst into full, glorious sight. I can see the fate of this city now, of all who live within it, except for you, curiously enough. The city will hold longer than this academy, but all things in this world fall to ruin. Every morning I wake and despair. For I see the mighty walls of Idilla and the Tower of the Primos crumble to dust before my eyes, replaced by an empty sky. I tell you, this Academy's destruction is assured. The details are vague to me, but there will come a time when theology means nothing to the Colossi. Academics, scholarly pursuits, all of it gone. In its place, the savagery of the Myru. Mark my words. 
I attend these final debates as the school enters its death throes to chronicle them for the future. Would that I could unsee some things. What do you think of our humble academy, Chosen One? Could I perhaps convince you to debate one of my prodigies? Surely the beckoned of Athene would be a worthy lecturer. He did not have the strength needed to appeal to the gods, though he was named Primos. His virtue faded over time. If anything, this city is great for separating the weak and impious from the strong. Not all have kept the promises we made to the gods. Some have left our city to live in the wilds, as if they were the Myru. Fools. I will admit, times are difficult for the school. Few have the fire within them to debate. They seem to prefer moping. That is what we were before the gods sought to raise us up. Life for the Myru was not as you see here. The Myru cared only for base pleasures, carnage, conquest, and power. They were far from the enlightened people the Colossi are today. I am the master of the Lycaos, 
I do what I can to enlighten the minds of those who enter my academy. Many argue the meaning of the beckoned. Are you a conduit of the gods or are you merely their messenger? I know what you are though. You are the strength of the gods incarnate. I despair that the Lycaos has passed under the awareness of one so blessed. Our academy is the center of conversation for philosophy and theology in Idilla. Would you be opposed to joining us for a dialogue or two? It would be an honor. The spears, you mean? They are for the debate. Wonderful! With the hard times about us, I worry that our long-kept traditions will eventually be lost as the school's influence wanes. Your involvement is sure to spark interest in the Lycaos once again. Now, let us begin. In your first debate, you face Thace, one of my most promising students. Study hard, Beckham. Greetings, Beckon. I... I take it that Onesimos wishes me to go through with this debate? Very well. You... you are? Then, uh, I will begin. I mean, here is the topic of discussion. A torrential storm sweeps a youngling and a full-grown colossi into the flow of a river. A big one. A river, I mean. Now, there is only time to save one. Which should one choose to save? And you, you would choose to spare the potential for strength over the certainty of it. That's, well, that's a stance few might stand by. Very well, let us begin the debate. Let us prepare. Easy on me. Smashed him senseless, beckoned. Why, this is the form all debates take here at the Lycaos. Opening statements are made, and combat determines the victor. I am unsure what else you were expecting. That said, will you allow others to challenge you? You appear to be quite skilled. Speak to Sisters. He is eager to debate with you. My students have told me that Sistus wishes to challenge you. Speak to him. He will be glad to test his might against yours. Study hard. Is it my turn to challenge you, Beckoned? I am eager to test you. And myself. I am glad. Tell me. What is the most effective display of strength in the following scenario? On a trip across a vast desert, you and a companion encounter a boulder. It is an airborne boulder, and it crushes your friend. He tells you, Leave me, Beckoned. Even were you to lift this boulder from off my battered body, I would be but half a colossi. What would the strong do?
You would save him? Beckoned you fight like a colossi, but you certainly do not think like one. Where would he be with his body obliterated? He would be half a man, and half a man can never be whole. His friends and family would pity him, shun him. I will best you in this debate, Beckoned. I must. Prepare yourself. An absolutely scintillating debate beckoned. Sisters didn't stand a chance. Are you ready for another? Find my disciple Zeno when you are. He wishes to challenge you. Speak to Zeno. He wishes to test his intellect against yours. My disciple, Zeno, wishes to speak with you. He would be more than happy to debate you. Study hard, Becker. Oh, you are the Beckoned? I wish to challenge you. Sister and Thace are worthy opponents. That you have debated them is impressive indeed. Especially for one so short. You are one of the greatest debaters I have ever seen, Beckoned. I hope I present a worthy challenge. My query for you is simple. What makes a war worth fighting? That is a suitable response, if a bit subjective. I am of the belief that nothing makes war more worth fighting than a worthy opponent, such as yourself. Prepare yourself for debate. Prepare yourself. <laughs> Zeno's argument was hastily prepared drivel next to your well-constructed thesis. Fine, an older disciple, wishes to debate with you. Speak to Fine. She is my eldest disciple, very powerful and wise. A true challenge awaits you. Speak to Fine. She is eager to match her logic against yours. Study hard, Hmm. You are much smaller than I expected. You are the better. You've defeated many of Master Onisimos' students, Beckoned. I am the oldest, the most powerful. Prepare yourself to face the Master's most gifted student. Excellent. You've done well thus far, but I have another query to test you. 
does might make right? You are proposing that strength will come to the just as long as they are virtuous. That is baffling. How can one be virtuous if one is weak? And how can one be just without the strength to protect oneself, one's family? Let us debate, and I shall show you my view of the world. Prepare yourself. I am eager to support my claims. Welcome back. Have you been enjoying your debates? Indeed, you have defeated all of my students, Beckham. The issue I pose to you is this, brought to my mind by your overwhelming strength. Can those with absolute power, such as yourself, have courage? If one enters battle with victory all but assured, can one also be called brave? You have proven differently here at the Lycaos. Very well. Let us debate. Prepare yourself. underlying gratitude for participating in our competitions. Please take this as a token of my appreciation. Word of your scintillating lectures is sure to bring attention to our school. Already there are more spectators in the Lycaos than there have been in years. Your thoughts guard you well in combat. May this talisman offer you similar protection. Though we were all taught sound lessons, my students and I have never seen this many in the Lycaos. Truly, you have helped us. Study hard, Beckham. <laughs> are good to us. 